Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back on a Sunday morning. So today we are here with the August horoscope. New month of August is here. The sun is at its peak. It's summer everywhere. And so are the planets. Why do I say this? Because if you see the degrees, Mars and Rahu are extremely close, right? So Mars has just crossed Rahu as I'm making this video. If you see Rahu is at 24 uh, degrees 6 minutes and Mars at 24 7. So they have just crossed each other. And now finally they are separating. That's great news. And Mercury has just entered Leo. So this is the uh, horoscope for 1st of August. I don't know if you can see this. Oops. Yeah. 1st of August. All right. So we see uh, Sun, of course, as usual, is in mid of Cancer, 15 degrees. Then Moon is about to enter uh, Uttar Falguni Nakshatra. Currently, he's in Purva Falguni and... Uh, then Mars Rahu, as you know, both are in Aries. Quite tight conjunction, quite quite a precarious conjunction. And then Mercury has just entered Leo, or it's about to enter uh, on first of August. And Jupiter is now retrograde in the sign of Pisces, and Venus is in the sign of Gemini. If you see Venus is there all alone, it is in Kendra to Jupiter. And what about Saturn? He's as expected in the sign of Capricorn. All right. And also retrograde, of course. So we have Mars and Rahu separating. So this is one major event uh, which is happening in the month of August. And <coughs> the other thing is we have Mercury, which enters the sign of Leo. Now, if you see what happens is there's a very interesting thing so as i am recording this video mars and rahu are still close all right so this thing that you see rahu is i mean mars is 24 7 this is only tomorrow okay but as i'm making this video now today sunday they're still not yet uh, together all right i mean they are very close but yeah it's gonna happen this night so now what happens when Mars Rahu comes together? I have spoken it uh, about it in detail. So things can appear more bloated, uh, way more bloated than it should be. But uh, as you know in Vedic Astrology, uh, nothing happens unless the Sun uh, and Moon uh, sanctions it, right? Because they are the king and queen basically, especially the Moon because the moon represents the mind okay so therefore uh, the mind is the root cause the seat of all desires and experiences of the past and unfulfilled expectations also so unless you have the moon which gets affected by these two planets in some similar way you will not most likely see uh, this thing happening this conjunctions effects okay now how does moon get affected now moon can directly get affected if uh, it conjuncts mars or rahu or if it conjuncts ketu because then it will receive the aspect of mars right uh, or if moon was in cancer it could have been affected by mars because mars aspects the fourth house or if moon is with positive planets like you know jupiter or natural friends um, then uh, it can have a relatively lesser negative impact but if it is with planets like mercury now moon does not consider mercury as his enemy but mercury definitely considers the moon as his enemy right so therefore whenever there is moon and, uh, moon and mercury conjunction uh, there can be over processing so there, there is like a mixture of uh, emotions and intellect right and that always uh, forces us to make a decision to be either on the side of emotions or to either be on the side of uh, logic right 
and this is happening in the sign of Leo so Leo deals with our ideas our authority our power our position right so there could be a scenario where uh, due to some reason you might be feeling that oh yeah my authority is getting challenged you know um, somebody is trying to pull me down right but then what do you end up doing so if you see here Mars is also aspecting the Sun right with its fourth aspect and of course uh, moon is out of this Rahu Ketu uh, Mars conjunction uh, but again it's with Mercury but the good thing is uh, on second I guess uh, moon since it is la in the last five degrees of uh, Leo so therefore it is going to be going uh, to the sign of Virgo right but again then after that it's going to enter Libra right where it is again with this Ketu so essentially uh, the first seven days could be a bit intense for August okay because currently moon Mercury is gone and when I say current I'm assuming uh, that it's already first of August tomorrow right so currently if you see moon and Mercury are together and uh, yeah things can uh, go at a pace which we are not ready for right and then when moon conjuncts Ketu then it is directly under this aspect of Mars right so Mars Ketu uh, Rahu conjunction with the moon so this is a tough situation where the moon feels the need to feel good so what does it mean feel good so the moon wants uh, so whenever you see moon will be with Ketu during the transit the moon will try to feel good about the things that we own which is the Sun right but then what happens when moon and Ketu are together we somehow do not end up feeling very good because we actually do not understand the things that we want to feel good so it's, it's a very tricky situation it's like saying you know you want to feel good but you still can't right so this can aggravate the Mars uh, Rahu Ketu conjunction so at least for uh, the next one week uh, we should be very cautious uh, in not doing things that we regret later and if something is very 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 intense right <coughs> like for example at the moment what is going on in India in India like the 31st July this year is the deadline for filing the income tax returns right of the previous uh, financial year so 5 crore uh, returns have been filed already so many people are saying oh will the deadline be extended yes no yes no yes no the government is saying no 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 we won't extend people are saying please please please, please extend it and there you see the task is there right it's because of this uh, Mars Rahu and Moon Mercury conjunction and Moon Mercury can show people are very interested in finances right so you can see today 31st everybody everybody is you know filing their income tax returns in India at least those who are uh, earning or have an income of more than two and a half lakh rupees <coughs> so, per year so that's going on you can see and you know it's a very intense time all the financiers and all this you know they are they are very busy at the moment right so moon and mercury so because moon is now involved with mercury so therefore the people who are in the finance sector are feeling this mars Rahu conjunction more right so that's what happens you see so mars Rahu conjunction will make things very tight but in which area that the moon will tell you right and then of course uh, the first week should uh, is, uh, looks to be a bit intense and then uh, by the first week Venus seems to enter the sign of uh, cancer and he will be conjunct the Sun for almost seven to eight days and by mid of uh, the month Sun will be entering Leo and of course Mercury will be in uh, Leo for quite some time 15 20 days so when Sun Mercury will enter uh, I mean uh, Mercury is already in Leo so when Sun enters there so Sun and Mercury will be conjunct in Leo for some time <coughs> so that is the period where now again Mercury shows things that we want to organize well right 
so when sun mercury are in leo by around mid of the month that time you will feel the need to organize your authority and power and position more and more and within some days uh, within seven to eight days most likely mars will be moving in uh, the sign of taurus right so that's a great relief mars moves into a feminine sign uh, from this masculine sign of the uh, aries so there's a great relief so food industry and all this can boom when mars enters taurus hospitality industry and all this right so mars is fire venus is uh, this, you know food so it's like cooking chef hotels and all this these these people these these industries can boom during this time and it's also summer especially in the west people are coming out they are having a good time in the open now <coughs> uh, but there is one interesting thing which uh, we are missing in the garb of you know mars and rahu and that is you know the sun saturn mutual aspect this happens once in a year <laughs> So Sun and Saturn for the next 15 days till mid of August they are completely uh, opposing each other, right? So this can very clearly mean that uh, some aspect of our authority is not as per our expectation, right? And that can hurt us a bit uh, emotionally, okay? So therefore, the first 15 days, why emotionally? Because Sun is in the sign of Cancer and Saturn is in Aquarius, uh, I mean Capricorn and he's very strong there. So he's saying, he's, he's as if dictating the Sun what to do, what not to do, right? <coughs> so the Sun which is our, you know, pure motives and pure inspiration, our aspirations in life, you know, that kind of uh, feels challenged when he's under the aspect of Saturn. Why? Because he comes in contact with the reality realities of life all right so essentially what i feel is the first 10 to 15 days of this month will still remain quite intense because moon and k2 conjunction will be there then sun saturn mutual axis but after that the rest the, uh, the later half uh, will be a bit relieving and especially with jupiter retrograde we will go back to certain things which we did in the past and we will try to figure out our motivations, right? So Jupiter can show motivations, inspirations, just like the sun. <coughs> and uh, Saturn is also retrograde. So he also wants us to focus on the reality. And if you see here, Saturn is aspecting Jupiter, right? With its, its third aspect. And he also aspects uh, Ketu in Libra, right? So therefore, we can get a feeling that because see, Jupiter and Ketu represent spirituality. So, when Saturn aspects planets like Jupiter or Ketu or both of them, then it's a time for us to introspect on our spiritual practices and see how much of the things that we committed are we actually doing it. So, if you feel that you are not doing spiritual practices, then now is the time you should start doing because when saturn aspects the two spiritual planets jupiter and ketu then it's a great time for us to give commitments and you know take up more responsibilities in the future right when it comes to our spiritual life so do more chanting read, read the bhagavad gita more you know try to visit holy places try to visit spiritual communities try to do some puja yagya homa and all these things right <coughs> that will actually uh, give us the impetus to uh, be more dedicated and uh, advanced spiritually right and later on of course mercury is going to enter uh, the Vir the sign of virgo i mean it should but I I'm, I'm not sure uh, if mercury will be retrograde or not <coughs> uh, but yeah during the time mercury is in leo uh, it is an interesting time for us to figure out our uh, inspirational figures that we exemplify within ourselves right so which means uh, we need to check who do we take inspiration from, right? And are they deserving to give us inspiration? Are their actions matching with their words, right? So, when Mercury is in Leo, this is what we have to check. And at the end, of course, Jupiter will be retrograde uh, to the entire August month. And Jupiter 
with its retrogression is going to give us some clues about our past experiences so look at your horoscope which houses does jupiter rules in your chart depending on your ascendant and depending on that you might want to rethink uh, certain things which you did in the past which needs a philosophical uh, interpretation or other you know philosophical <coughs> expertise and experience all right thank you very much uh, wish you all the best